everyone. This is Ramp Up Your Professional Style, session number two on clothing personality today. This is Kelly with Kelly Dugan Image Consulting, and we are excited that you are here with us today and continuing our style journey. So what we learned in session number one was that personal style is really that totality of our look. It's that head to toe, uh, full conglomeration of it all working together that spells out what your style is for you. Uh, our first focus was on color and line. Those are your two pillars to image development. And today we're going to continue that journey and move on to clothing personality and look at how style comes into defining uh, your personal style. So what personal style will give you is it gives you clarity. It gives you consistency in your look. It gives you continuity. It's going to allow you to look and feel great. It's going to allow you to shop in less time. It's going to allow you to not have garments hanging in your closet laughing at you. It's going to uh, help diminish or completely eliminate that thought of walking in your closet and having nothing to wear because you're going to have so much to wear in your closet as you apply these principles um, that uh, you you won't even be able to fathom it actually. And I say that just because again, as I've shared before, I practice what I preach and I've applied personal style development to my wardrobe for 20 plus years. And I can tell you what, I have way more uh, outfits. I don't have lots of garments, but I have more outfits that uh, you, know, you could have time to wear. So you can have that too. So uh, uh, who would love to, you know, not have that I have nothing to wear going on or um, in, you know, crazy days being able to run into your closet and grab and go and have multiple things that would mix and match together and create outfits for you. Again, back to that, you want to look and feel great. And, and that's the core with I, what I think within um, you know, as we see those individuals walk into the room and they always look put together, it's just that they have garments and pieces that will work together to create great ensembles for them. So today, our agenda, when we think about the flow of our presentation today, uh, it's going to be a little shorter today, uh, but our discussion points are going to be, you know, what really is clothing personality? Uh, clothing personality is an integral next step in developing personal style. We're going to build off from the what we learned in color and proportion and line for you, but in developing that thought of personal and on into your professional style, clothing personality is our next uh, step. We're going to define the different types of clothing personalities and look at them as how they work together for yourself. So when we think of clothing personality, how it is um, influenced or comes about is that it is determined by who you are physically and your physical traits. Like we did discover color and body shape and proportions in our first session. That's a core part of developing personal style. But the other components of that are really assessing your features, uh, what your coloring is, what your hair type is, uh, are, are your bone features not only balanced or not, but are they angular or are they, um, you know, more um, medium or larger in scale? Or are you uh, finer or dainty in your bone structure? Uh, on into what your own personal likes and dislikes are is what really determines what clothing personality is for you. So as we start to walk through these six core or main personalities, um, what I'd like you to do is really in this session, do a self-assessment of what sounds right to you, you know, yes or no on questions like this personality definition describes me, yes or no. Um, the body types that we're talking about and the body frames and the proportions of your frame and your features, does that define you? Yes or no. The clothing styles uh, within them, the, the types of fabrics to the cut and lines and the designs within the garments themselves or the outfit or the ensemble, how it's paired together, um, does that represent you? Yes or no. This will be an easy way to do a quick um, introduction to clothing personality. What I find is many of us kind of, we, we know where we're at, but get kind of lost in presenting that with continuity and fluidity on a daily basis. Uh, many, many years ago, my, uh, one of my trainers said, you know, do you want the same person walking out of your closet on a daily basis? You know, we don't want, uh, you know, in a sense, a schizophrenic uh, closet where there's different personalities that walk out each day. Now you might need to dress differently when we think about the activity 
activities that you're doing that we want to do, um, whether you need to be dressed up more, or it's more casual, or it's a home, uh, you know, in your sweats day. Um, but what you want in it is the continuity that the style of who you are is still the same. If you're soft and feminine in your style, you want that continuity from dressed up to very casual. If you're super refined and elegant and classic in your style, you want that in all your types of dress that you walk out the door. And then when we think about these other personalities today. So again, as we walk through and introduce you to these six core clothing personalities, kind of self-assess yourself again. Does it define you or not? You'll be able to check off the list like, nope, those aren't me really fast. Um, and, and when we think about clothing, personality development, who we are, we're defining again, like I said, these six different personalities of the classic, the dramatic, the romantic, the ingenue, the natural, the gammon. Um, one of those will be your primary personality, but you may have some sub influences of one or two others. But today, what I want you to walk away with as you listen to this um, is what is that primary? What's that main part of your personality that you can build off and, and then develop as you learn more about clothing personality? So let's look at our first personality. This is the classic. We define the classic, the classic of who they are themselves. They are controlled, they're organized. Um, the classic is refined and elegant. They're the individual who wants that head to toe look that it was bought to go together. Back in traditional suited days, as if we look at our gal here and this matched suited look here that was bought together, that's a true classic where things go together. Um, now you can do mixed match separates like our gal next door here and still put that same classic line look together. Now the classic's gonna be happy wearing the same outfit every day. If it's put together well, it's a fine quality and uh, they just look and feel great in them. Now how they finish will be very controlled and uh, quite refined in the presence of their finishing from their hair and their makeup to uh, the shoes and, and bag. Now I will say the true classic is the gal who's gonna change her handbag for every outfit <laughs> and her shoes. So some of you right there are gonna say, nope, that's not me. So some other things that you want to think about within the classic is that it is a fashionable yet timeless look. It's, it's really what core, um, any core wardrobe should kind of be built off from. And then you can add things in that create your style if you are not the classic. But if you think just of classic garments, that, that is truly the classic personality. But who they are when we think about physical features, um, body type, a body type of a classic is gonna be quite balanced. That shoulder to hip is balanced. All their features are balanced in the sense of just uh, an average um, continuity in the look. Um, in, including, you know, within the thought of uh, hair texture, you can get into the real fine-tuned details of it as well. Um, they have a little bit more of a mature look about them, no matter their age as well. Uh, clothing styles and fabrics and so forth that a classic likes, uh, they have a style that's fashionable and dignified. You can have a bit of contemporaneous or upscaleness to them. The lines are going to be softly tailored, but still have some refinement or structure to the style. Uh, they do like that dressmaker or old fashioned suit style or mix match separates that create that. So even as we look to our far side of the screen here in this uh, longer style uh, jacketed look, again, this is mix match separates, but it creates just a true more dressmaker style type of look. Uh, your styles are never uh, trendy or faddish uh, or severe. And I would say that when we think about colors and we see this here, that solids are going to dominate the look of a classic. Uh, they like fabrics that are low luster, more uh, matte in finish, and just a sense of richness and quality to the weights of their fabrics, to the feel, the hand of the fabric. That's a, a technical term for the hand is the feel of the fabric. Uh, and fabric textures or, or fabrics are going to be more refined within the, the types of fabrics that they choose. They, you know, really prefer more richness in silks and woolens, crepes, gabardines, uh, summer weight fabrics as you get into your cottons or, or cashmeres that can, or weights that could be worn year round as well. So that is our classic. Again, 
controlled, organized, refined, and elegant, the true classic. Next, we have the dramatic. The dramatic is that high fashion, sophisticated look. The dramatic's the one who likes to turn heads when they walk into the room. Uh, wherever she goes, you know, people are going to follow and like, ooh, ah, uh, over what she's wearing. Um, it is a personality of majesty. It's a personality of mystery. Uh, and that personality can be, they themselves, maybe quite intimidating to those who are not dramatic. You know, that's the individual that you might not want, you know, you might have a little fear walking up to, but actually, um, you know, they are very genuine. They are very open. They are one of the first to really invite you in and have conversations with them. So when we think about the features uh, and our body types with the dramatics, again, does this describe you? Yes or no? Or when I said earlier, do, you know, you, you want to turn heads as you want people to notice you. Is that yes or no? Um, but when we think about the body type for the dramatic, they are generally going to be a taller um, individual in height, five foot eight or taller. Uh, their features are going to be angular, maybe even somewhat um, exotic. If you think of Cher of older days, uh, younger um, individuals, you might think of, um, um, now I can't say her name. Angelina Jolie uh, is another, when you think about her, just her angular facial features and so forth. Their body, along with being taller, is going to be balanced shoulder to hip and uh, maybe more lean in look too, lanky kind of, but in that angular exoticness. Their clothing styles, and again, does this describe you? Uh, lines should be sleek and long. They like straight lines. Uh, and you see with our examples here, styles are gonna be high fashion, uh, possibly not always appropriate for every uh, industry of work. You're gonna need to watch uh, you know, what you're wearing and depending on the industry that you're in. Some of these garments can have quite severe uh, lines, uh, severely tailored lines. Uh, sharp lines, uh, often, you know, very squared off, angular necklines, uh, somewhat more of that extreme exotic kind of look in the sense of their dress, particularly if it's a primary personality. Um, so you may see a little bit of softness and draping in it, but only is it to kind of elongate the body lines. Uh, and this individual is more of an ensemble dresser, very much like the classic where they want an outfit that went together, it was bought together to look together. Not to say that they couldn't learn some mix and match and use some mix and match in their wardrobe, uh, but dominantly they are an ensemble dresser. Fabrics will have, you know, some defined shape to them and they like, uh, you know, taffetas, brocades that are more stiff, uh, linens, uh, as well as patterns that can be more bold and sweep um, across the frame and creating some abstract and uh, geometric looks within the, the prints or patterns themselves. So that is the dramatic. Next, let's look at the romantic. The romantic is really that epitome of fem femininity and or sexiness. Um, she's born just curvy and soft in her features. Uh, she and herself, her personality is charming, enchanting, uh, kind of a magnetic personality that draws people into them. Uh, she gives attention to fine tune details within the look itself and creating visual appeal. Many times within their look, um, they don't do a lot more in accessories because if we look at these garments here, the details within the garments, here you can see a little bit, some of the lace within that sleeve or the prints of the blouse or your pleating and so forth, the ruching of the garments, it creates that detailing and so forth within the garment. So they don't often always wear many more accessories. It's built in to the garment itself. So the body type of the romantic, and again, remember self-assess when we're thinking through all of these things, does it describe you? Does that sound like your body type? Are these the types of fabrics and looks that you like? Yes or no? And it's going to help guide you into knowing what that primary personality is for you. But for the romantic, the body shape, again, they're born kind of curvy, um, who they are. They have rounded features. They're shapely. Um, they most likely are going to be more full busted 
twisted and rounded through the hip line. They are not that straight up and down body. They could be that V frame or the inverted triangle that we talked about in our first session or the A frame where they're broader through the hip. Um, but again, they're going to have curviness just naturally to their bone structure. And that's not weight we're talking about. That's just your bone structure and your features of how you fill out. And it's that curvy um, frame or to the hourglass frame as well. So with clothing personality, when we think about the, the styles themselves to the fabrics, uh, the romantic wants lines that, that are rounded and curved. They like draping. Again, they like what I mentioned with the detailing and the designs. They like the pleating and the puckering. They like flowy shapes and defined waistlines that uh, accentuate, even, they don't, even if they've lost their waistline. They may have had one there when they were younger, but as our bodies mature and fill out, um, but just through just you know your construction of the design lines when putting a, an outfit together, you can create the shape of a waist. They want fluidity from that head to toe and the softness. Um, and you are never going to see a romantic in boxy types of garments. So it's always going to be soft and flowy. So with that thought, fabrics are going to be light to medium weight. Uh, finishing is going to be rich and luscious, whether they're in denim to dressed up. And uh, fabrics are going to be soft, silky, cashmere, wool jersey, soft, su subtle uh, sweater knits, angora, soft suedes and leathers are going to be right up the alley for uh, romantic. And they're the gal who does like to add in some prints um, as well as solids with their look. So that is the romantic. Next, we want to look at the ingenue. The ingenue is the baby sister to the romantic. The ingenue is that naively soft feminine look. It is that girlish femininity. Um, it has a sense of sweetness and innocence uh, that is portrayed in their femininity versus the grown up sexy part of the romantic. Um, generally, they are going to, when we think about their body type, the ingenue is going to be gently rounded, softly feminine, but dainty in their, um, when we think about their overall bone structure. So next is we think about in that sense of that innocently feminine style, it can come across a little bit more old fashioned in look when we look at uh, some of the lace and different looks here, uh, or it can go into that Victorian type of style as well. Um, frocks, soft rustle, ruffles, lace, as I mentioned, uh, petite uh, mini prints suit that feminine style well, as well as the embroidered uh, and very detailed. Um, this is where they fall suit in the sense of the romantic where much of the design is built into the garment. So you don't see a lot of accessories on any of these pictures, probably just a pair of earrings finish the look because the garment or the outfit itself has much of the embellishment with it. So fabrics that the ingenue likes are lightweight, soft woolens, angora, fine cottons, crisp cottons, gauze, crocheted knits um, are all very suitable to the look with a bit of crisp quality. So does this define you? Next, we have the natural. I think many of you will relate to this personality here. The natural is that um, easygoing, get out of bed and go, Gail, I would say. Um, it's more than any other personality where they really know who they are from a very, very young age. Um, the clothes, as we see here, are going to be less tailored, unstructured when we look at the flowiness and the look of the garments. Uh, if we were to put a jacket on the scale, it would not be a fitted type of jacket, whether it's a traditional suit jacket to even a novelty type of jacket. Uh, but again, that natural really wants that comfort. That's going to come first, ultimately, is comfort and ease is what the true natural wants. Um, so nothing overdone, no fuss and muss, simple, put together, just functional clothes that will work for them. They are definitely the gal that's going to be um, mixed match separates. They are going to attest a suited look for, for sure. Um, and so my gals that I work with that do need to be in a jacket or suited look, that's where we're going to put them in an unstructured jacket. We're going to use fabrics like some of the great knits that are out, like the 
a ponte knit that has structure but stretch to it so they can stay comfort comfortable because again the natural just wants that lived in feel so their body type is going to be balanced um, it could have some soft angularness to it uh, bone structure medium to larger in bone structure uh, for those who are truly uh, unnatural um, average in height uh, that you know five six five seven on a uh, taller is a typical uh, natural and we've mentioned early on here as we describe the natural but where their clothing type is going to be is unstructured simple and soft tailoring uh, no fuss no precise fit loose and easy soft for mobility um, it has minimal and details uh, if you do details it might be a little bit in accessories like we see this gal with a scarf um, or in you know the styling of the ribbed uh, turtleneck sweater here where that might be where you add in some details to the look uh, but again mix and match patterns we like texture we like weight of fabric to be more so soft rough and kind of nubby um, the natural is the gal who doesn't mind if things wrinkle um, if uh, you know if if you're okay with wrinkling you got natural in you someplace but a true natural that crinkled or wrinkled uh, look is just great for balancing the style of who you are so great fabrics also include jerseys uh, cable studded the the tweeds flannels uh, corduroys of the season right now for winter season as we're talking uh, but into the summer you're again the linens and uh, uh, cottons and then year round, I would say denim is going to be a friend to the natural. So as we wind down and we move into our sixth personality here, number six is the gammon. The gammon is a gal of great energy and lots of talent. They are snappy and chic. They have tons of energy. Um, and uh, generally speaking, their style is petite. It depends on what they're combined with. Like I said, we're talking about primary personalities, but we're all um, combined with another one or two personalities. But for that primary thought, um, you know, you could be a variety of heights and be a gammon with this. Again, if we think of cre a creative style is what the gammon is. Um, they uh, are aligned closely to the classic when we look at the general design of the look this looks pretty classic but a classic would do this all in one color or put on a dark sweater where the gammon is the one who adds pops of colors you don't see them in monochromatic look unless they've added something bold or fun to it now what i say about classic styles like this outfit here this is all monochromatic one color but she's got something extra going on <laughs> so when we think of this overlaid lace uh collar at, and the, the cuff on the garment that it breaks it up. They have like this staccato splash of pattern or color going on. So we don't want a look that becomes boring um, that can ruin a gammon's look fast. So she likes fun and a good time uh, when we think about that personality. And, and so because who she is is quite um, a ball of energy and a, has a lot of animation and who they are in just their personality of how they talk and walk and carry themselves and think that their garments need to do the same thing. Otherwise, they're just kind of lost in it all. So body types, uh, again, for the gammon is they, they can be a variety of heights, but generally speaking, they're small to medium and build in five foot five and under. So think about your height. Um, and you can be lean and slim to more chunky or stocky and be within the gammon um, clothing personality. So they like that classic look, but they love mix match separates. So when we think about their clothing, uh, we talked a little bit about that they need that splash of color or something going on. Avoid the, the all one color, the monochromatic. Um, and their overall style will have a sense of a bit of contemporariness to it as well. Uh, and built with you know small, sharp, eye-catching details within the look that really spells or defines their, their style. Colors will be bold and sassy uh, to, again, carry that energy and uh, prints are very popular for them. 
So these are our six core clothing personalities and we'll bring them up here and just do a quick recap. So we want you to walk away thinking about what is that primary personality? Are you the classic who's refined and elegant and put together and likes that ensemble dressing? Or are you the natural who uh, really, excuse me, the dramatic who really likes to catch individuals' attention, will mix types of pattern, want their colors and their shapes and designs bold and head turning? Are you the ingenue who has a soft femininity to you, more naively feminine but soft? Or the romantic who likes that curvy, lush, sexy typeness to their look? Or you could be the natural that likes some heft to the fabrics. Uh, you can dress up or dress down, uh, but uh, you just want an easy look and uh, some oomph, what I say, in the fabrics that you wear. Or the gammon, where again, your looks could be quite classic, but you've got that something extra fun and going on that creates energy in your style. So those are our six core clothing personalities. So as we wind down here today, I just want to thank you for taking this journey of, of creating a personal and professional style and thinking through what your style traits are. Um, who we are, like I said, I'm Kelly with Kelly Dugan Image Consulting. Um, so please visit our brand new website, Kelly Dugan. Dot com. That's K-E-L-L-Y-D-U-G-G-A-N.com. You want to check out um, all that we're doing in coaching, training, um, and personal image services. But particularly if you're into personal style, do check out our style studio services under the personal image tab. Also, if you're looking to learn more about personal style or image development for yourself, this is session two of three in a mini series for ramping up your professional and personal style. So please consider joining us on Wednesday, the 24th at 1 p.m. We will post our uh, recording of our session number three which will be on finishing and pulling your look together with accessories and finishing again on the 24th, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Now, if you're looking to feel more comfortable online as well, we're doing that a lot these days. Uh, I also have a collaborative uh, project going on that I'd love to share with you, and that is called Up Your Digital Game. It's upyourdigitalgame.com. Myself, a collaborative uh, process here with Gladstone and Associates as we are combining our many, many years of uh, expertise and pulling it together to help you with an information packed downloadable guide on creating personal brand and understanding and how to use the best technology out there to present your very best. So go to upyourdigitalgame.com and check out what we're doing uh, with uh, Kelly Dugan Image Consulting and Gladstones and Associates. So we're airing this via YouTube. We'd love to have you follow us on YouTube and like us and follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And as we close, um, I'd like to give just a quick shout out to uh, my uh, great intern, Catherine, who put this uh, wonderful, designed this wonderful slide uh, show for us today. Um, and know that personal style development allows you the privilege to truly portray your authentic self. And that's what we're, and what I'm helping, wanting to help you do is to really define that sense of what is true to you, authentic to you, and think about how that you can portray and use that out in your daily getting dressed life. What I say is, you know, we have to get dressed every day. So let's do it with um, this philosophy and system that will allow you to present and be your very best. Um, so it allows you to feel comfortable and confident. It allows you, like I mentioned early on, you can dress much faster. You can uh, have the right garments in your wardrobe. You can spend less, much, less money uh, or less time out shopping and you'll have many outfits put together for the number of garments that you have in your closet. So as we wrap up our series on the 24th, I hope you can join us. And on, again, that session, we will be exploring finishing and accessorizing your personal style and will be your next principles and growing a personal and professional style. So thank you for joining us and have a great day.